What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about training to failure and proximity to failure. But before we get into it, make sure you click the like button, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm so that we can show up on more people's screens because you know, we need that YouTube money. Now when I was growing up and getting into bodybuilding, the only information we had was basically Flex Magazine, Muscular Development, Muscle and Fitness, and whatever other magazine we could find at the grocery store. Pretty much all those magazines had one continuous theme, which is, you must train to failure. You have to train to failure. If you don't take every set to absolute gut-wrenching, eyeball-popping, blood-spewing failure, then you'll never make gains. And so that became ingrained in bodybuilding dogma and muscle building dogma. And when they first started doing research studies, they did show superior outcomes when training to failure versus people who didn't train to failure. But one of the major drawbacks of those original studies was people who trained to failure were getting in more total volume than people who didn't train to failure. So one of the key questions that got answered in the last decade of muscle hypertrophy research was, what if we have people train to failure versus just close to failure and we equate volume between the groups? And very interestingly, what they showed was pretty much identical hypertrophy outcomes in people who train close to failure versus people who train to absolute failure. Failure has a few different definitions. Typically the one you'll see in literature as defined as muscular failure is when somebody could not complete another repetition with good form. Now, one of the problems about measuring failure in research studies and one of the reasons that the original studies showed much better outcomes with training to failure is that people who are new to training are actually really, really poor predictors of how close to failure they actually are. People who are new or intermediate tend to underestimate their RIR or repetitions in reserve by like five to six reps. So for example, if they did say 10 reps and they said, oh yeah, I only had two left, it's actually likely they had seven or eight reps left. That is a massive difference. And so when they would do studies where they'd have people stop shy of failure, they actually weren't even getting really close to failure. And then they would have people go to failure and those people were actually getting to failure, but they were doing way more reps. So more recent research has looked at all right, if we have people trained within a few reps of failure versus people trained to absolute failure, we equate volume, what happens? And the research shows that the hypertrophy outcomes are basically the same. And actually, in I think one study, there was a little bit better strength outcomes. And when you're looking at strength or the expression of strength through a one rep max, and this really applies to a lot of people who compete in powerlifting, one of the things we're managing is your fitness, which is basically how strong are you, and your fatigue because you could have a high level of fitness or a high level of strength, but if you're really fatigued, you can't express it appropriately. And so you're trying to manage your strength level versus your fatigue. And if you're training to failure constantly, you may be pushing that fatigue higher than it needs to be compared to if you were just stopping a few reps shy of failure. Some of this research has also led to the effective reps hypothesis. In order to get a hypertrophy stimulus, you must train in close proximity of failure. And the, the most common version of this hypothesis is you need to train within five reps of failure. But the hypothesis falls short in a few different places. And one of them is in compound lifts, that doesn't necessarily appear to be true. And that may be because during compound lifts, you get such a high recruitment and muscle activation that you can actually train a little bit further from failure and still recruit a lot of muscle fibers. Whereas in isolation exercises, it appears that the effect of reps hypothesis may actually hold a little bit more weight. So when it comes to single joint movements, isolation movements, it does appear that training within five reps of failure gives you better results compared to training outside of that range. So what do I actually practically recommend? Well, I think first off, it's important to note that if you wanna to train to failure, you still can. It's not like you're gonna get worse outcomes in terms of hypertrophy. Now, keep in mind that if you train to failure so much that your performance starts decreasing, uh, you feel really beat up, maybe you get a little bit injured, that can decrease your potential for gains over time, but on a biochemical or physiological level, it doesn't appear that training to failure is worse than training within a few reps of failure. However, you may be inducing a greater level of fatigue than you actually need to have. I think the vast majority of your training should probably be done 
two to three reps shy of failure. If you're somebody who is doing a big compound movement, you might be able to scale it back a little bit more even since you're still getting so much activation. If you're somebody who's doing a lot of isolation movements, you can probably train a little bit closer to failure. When it comes to fatigue, leaving two reps in reserve on a back squat is a way different amount of systemic fatigue compared to leaving two reps in the tank on a machine preacher curl. So those two things are not equal. What I would recommend is if you really wanna to train to failure, the way I would do it is I would probably do it on your final set of an exercise and I would probably reserve it for single joint isolation movements that aren't quite so systemically taxing. I would not spend a lot of time training to failure on big compound free weight movements because it just appears to induce a level of fatigue that you quite frankly don't need to go to. Now I'm not saying you can never do it, but it should be probably used sparingly. And if you're training to failure relatively frequently on big compound movements, you probably need to work in pretty frequent tapers and deloads in order to accommodate for that and help you recover and dissipate some of that fatigue. All that is one of the reasons why we made the BioLane Workout Builder. Because the BioLane Workout Builder allows you to have the guidance of knowing what sets and reps to do and how close to take your exercise to failure in terms of RPE or RIR, but it gives you the freedom to select some of your exercises based on what you personally prefer and what you have available at your gym or home. And we do have home-based programs as well. Because I know for me, there are some machines that I love that just seem to fit for my body and my mechanics that, for example, my wife can't stand. But when we're using the BioLane Workout Builder, what's great is I could do, say, a hack squat on a machine that I really like and really enjoy. She might hate it, but she can select a leg press and do a leg press on a machine she really enjoys. And you're getting similar muscle activation from both. So we've actually grouped exercises accordingly so that you can make some swaps based on your personal preferences and what you have available. So the Workout Builder is only $12.99 a month. We've just completely overhauled it. It has an amazing user interface and we've gotten some amazing feedback on it so far. And for only $7 more a month, you can upgrade your subscription to include reps, which is research explained in practical summaries, which is our monthly research review. So you can keep up on all the latest cutting edge scientific research as it relates to nutrition and training and have it translated into a format that's super easy for anyone to understand. So make sure you click the links in the description and check it out and we'll catch you next week.